Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on section 4.1 entitled Energy and Entropy, Alternative Reaction Pathways. In class today we did an investigation that involved two types of chemical reactions, both generating the same end product that we were concerned with, which is carbon dioxide. The first reaction was sodium bicarbonate reacting with acetic acid to produce sodium acetate, water, and carbon dioxide. The second chemical reaction was calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce calcium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Now both of these are chemical reactions. We know, it, <clears throat> we know it's a chemical reaction, not just because we have a chemical equation here, but because the composition of our starting materials has changed into new material. So our sodium bicarbonate, acetic acid, calcium carbonate, and hydrochloric acid have transformed, the atoms have been rearranged and are something completely different on the product side that is symbolic of a chemical change or a chemical reaction. Now in order to have these chemical reactions, in order to make these chemical changes happen, it takes energy. So it takes energy to break the chemical bonds in my reactants so that they can rearrange and form our products. These chemical bonds can be seen as being held together by intramolecular forces. Intra means within. So forces within molecules. So a little bit more about these. These are bonds that are existing within molecules, intramolecular forces. They hold the atoms together in an individual compound. These are hard to break, but you need energy to do so. Now, that's intramolecular forces. Let's take a different example. Also in class today, we did a phase change. We had liquid water. I added heat to it, and it became gaseous, water vapor. This was a physical change, because my starting material is the same as my ending material. I simply changed the state of matter. This is a phase change. And as I went through this phase change, I had my water molecules here, H2O and H2O, they initially were connected by this intra, or sorry, intermolecular force. This intermolecular force is a force between molecules, represented by this dashed line here, this dotted line. This would be a hydrogen bond. So an intermolecular force is an attractive force that exists between molecules, holding them in their solid or liquid state. When, once this intermolecular force, or this hydrogen bond here, was broken, I was able to get a phase change and create H2O gas. Let's talk about how these changes, whether a chemical change or a physical change, how they deal with energy. Before we go there, last thing, sorry. It takes more energy to overcome the strong intramolecular forces than it does to overcome these weaker intermolecular forces. Intramolecular forces are due to chemical bonding, which is stronger than a physical connection or just a, an attraction through charge. We'll talk about that later. So let's talk about energy changes. In a chemical reaction, it takes energy to make a chemical reaction take place. Oftentimes, energy can be absorbed and released, but the overall, the overall change is sometimes recorded as gaining energy or losing energy in terms of your reactants and products. An energy change that happens in a chemical reaction or in a physical reaction is best analyzed through observing in which direction this change is occurring. We've talked about this before, but let's hit on it again. When energy is absorbed, the change is described as an endothermic change. Endo meaning in like you enter a room. Endothermic, meaning absorbing, energy going in. When energy is released, the change is described as an exothermic change. Now exothermic means energy is being released, energy is coming out, like the word exit. That's where you leave, you go out. Now in our original <coughs> board there, the title of our section here is energy and entropy. Let's talk about entropy and how it can be related to the concept that we know of as energy. Entropy 
is the measure of the amount of disorder of a material. So just how disordered is a material. Let's use our example from the first whiteboard. We have liquid water going through a phase change to become water vapor. This happens by adding heat. Now liquid will absorb the heat. That's an endothermic change. We're adding energy into this liquid water. So what's happening is the liquid, which has particles that are, you know, uh, kind of close together, not very far apart, not packed as tightly as a solid. They're somewhere in between. They're touching each other. They're loosely connected. As we add heat, we add more kinetic energy. These particles start vibrating, vibrating. We have those intermolecular forces breaking, that, those hydrogen bonds breaking, liberating these gas particles here, or the H2O water vapor. These are moving around very fast, very spontaneously, and in a very, you know, crazy and wild manner. They're very unpredictable in this state. So with that, we would say that the gas phase is more disordered. The gas phase has more entropy, or it is more entropic. So as we add in energy in this endothermic change and create a gaseous substance, we know gases have more kinetic energy, they are more disordered, they have more entropy. All right, gentlemen, take notes, and we'll talk about this concept further tomorrow. Adios.